Preface. Some of the information in this video may become outdated in the future if I choose to make changes to the game's story and characters. However, this video will always remain relevant as a documentation of the game's history and development. In July of 2013, I quit my job at a video game company to pursue my dream of becoming an independent game developer. Throughout 2013 and 14, I came up with a lot of game ideas and pitched them to various message boards. It was very fun to show off my game prototypes and discuss the games that I wanted to create. But, if one of my game ideas had a premise or protagonist that the forum didn't like, then the discussion would focus exclusively on story and characters rather than gameplay. This was very frustrating for me. When I first began showing off Yandere Simulator, the threads about it were extremely successful. Lots of cool gameplay mechanics were being suggested, and people were very excited about the potential of the project. But when I started creating story cutscenes, everyone stopped discussing gameplay and started complaining about the protagonist and the premise. I was tired of seeing this happen with every game project I worked on. I decided that it would be better if Yandere Simulator had the most bare-bones protagonist and story possible. I decided that the main character should be a blank slate. No past, no backstory, no interests, no hobbies, no personality. An empty husk. A simple avatar who only exists to carry out the player's orders. I didn't even want to give her a real name. For 18 months, I just called her Yandere-chan. I didn't want to hear people complaining that they didn't like her backstory. So, I decided that she would have zero noteworthy experiences in her life before the game began. I didn't want to hear people complaining that they didn't like her personality, so I decided that she would be a girl with no emotions whatsoever. I didn't want to hear people complaining about her design, so I made her completely customizable. So, how does an emotionless girl fall in love? And why would she be willing to kill for her loved one? I decided that Senpai would awaken something in her and cause her to feel emotions for the first time. To comprehend what this would feel like, imagine that you've been cold, blind and deaf for your entire life, and then all at once, you suddenly gain the ability to feel warmth, see beauty, and hear music for the very first time. Senpai's presence somehow enables Yandere-chan to experience the full range of sensations that she's been missing out on for her entire life. Yandere-chan instantly becomes addicted to this boy. It wouldn't actually be accurate to describe it as love. She needs him on a deeper level than she needs food, water, or breathing. In his presence, she feels alive, and in his absence, she feels dead. She doesn't even understand why this boy is able to make her feel things she's never felt before, but she knows that she wants to enter a lifelong relationship with him and keep him at her side forever. Losing him to another girl would be a death sentence. And so, she resolves to eliminate her competition through any means necessary. I didn't want to provide a reason for why she's emotionless because someone would just complain that they don't like it. I didn't want to provide a reason for why Senpai is able to unlock her emotions, because someone would just complain that they don't like it. I didn't want to give her any sort of backstory or personality whatsoever, because I knew that it would just derail discussions about the game. Everything about Yandere-chan was designed to minimize the number of complaints that I'd have to listen to while working on the game. Ironically, Yandere-chan's emotionless nature 
has actually caused a lot of complaints. In Japanese, the word yanderu means to be mentally ill. The word dere dere means to be lovestruck. This is where the word yandere comes from. Yandere-chan does not have a mental illness, or rather, she doesn't have any real-world condition that actually exists. It's debatable whether or not she loves Senpai. She's pursuing him because she needs him in order to feel alive, not because she has a simple schoolgirl crush on him. So, does Yandere-chan even qualify as a Yandere girl? It depends on how strict you are with the definition of the word. If you define Yandere as a character who seems innocent but secretly has a psychotic side, then our protagonist is definitely a Yandere girl. But if you define Yandere as a character who is sweet and cute on the outside and becomes violent because of love specifically, then Yandere-chan technically doesn't count. In the beginning, I definitely didn't expect Yandere Simulator to become popular. I thought that, at the most, only a few hundred people would even play it. I wasn't trying to create a masterpiece. I was only trying to make a game where an anime girl stabs people. I thought I'd just work on it for about eight months and then release it. I thought that the final game would only be about as deep as mission mode currently is. If I had known how popular the game would eventually become, I probably would have taken the protagonist more seriously and given her an actual backstory and personality. But at the beginning of the game's development, making her a deep character was the last thing on my mind. Sometimes I do get the desire to change a few things about how Yandere-chan is characterized. For example, instead of portraying her as a girl who has been emotionless for her entire life, perhaps she could be a girl who has felt like something is missing for her entire life. Imagine being permanently hungry but unable to eat, or permanently tired but unable to sleep, or permanently thirsty but unable to drink. This lifelong sensation of having a craving that cannot be fulfilled would prevent her from ever truly being happy and would result in a perpetual state of listlessness. Her mother would tell her that this is a condition that runs in her family and that one day she'll meet someone who will fulfill this permanent sense of craving and allow her to finally become happy. Yandere-chan would look forward to this moment and fantasize about this moment and obsess over this moment for her entire life. And once that moment finally occurs, she would resolve to do absolutely anything to protect this person because losing them would doom her to a life where she is unable to ever find happiness. I like this idea because it doesn't change Yandere-chan's identity too much from what has already been established, and because it wouldn't really require me to change anything in the game, other than the voiceover of the introduction cutscene. However, I worry that it would be weird if I changed what type of character she is at this point in time. She's been defined as an emotionless girl for almost three years now. Part of me wants her to remain as an empty vessel devoid of personality whose sole purpose as a character is to carry out the player's commands. And part of me wants her to become just a little bit deeper than that. Changing the nature of the protagonist after three years would be a big deal so it's a decision that I wouldn't want to make without carefully considering the community's opinion. Your feedback on this matter would be greatly appreciated. I'll put a poll in the video description, and I'll also pay close attention to what the community says about my proposal 
to change Yandere Chan's identity. Regardless of whether or not I decide to make changes to Yandere Chan's identity, it's important to note that her personality is largely dependent on the choices of the player. For example, if you go on a killing spree, you are establishing that she's bloodthirsty. If you eliminate your rivals in a cruel way, you are establishing that she's sadistic. If you eliminate your rivals in a stealthy way, you are establishing that she's cunning. If you eliminate your rivals without a single drop of blood being shed, then you are establishing that she's not a violent person at all. Yandere-chan is a reflection of you and your choices. The only thing that all versions of Yandere-chan have in common is that every one of them has the potential to do incredibly cruel things, because she is striving to avoid losing senpai, which, to her, would be a fate worse than death. Even if I do decide that Yandere-chan should remain a very simple and straightforward character, this doesn't mean that the rest of the game needs to be shallow. I've come up with a backstory for Yandere-chan's mother, her grandmother, and the rest of her ancestors. I've come up with an origin for the strange condition that runs in their family. I've come up with an explanation for what makes Senpai so special, what causes him to attract so many women, and what causes him to awaken feelings in Yandere-chan. I've also come up with an overarching story that goes beyond just Yandere-chan and involves a wider cast of characters who each have distinct personalities. So, even if Yandere-chan is intentionally a very simple character, I still intend to do the best I can to deliver a good story. Some of Yandere Simulator's characters will be simple, some of them will be complex, and some of them will appear shallow on the surface, but will actually have hidden depth that you won't learn about until you get to know them. If you don't like what you've seen or heard of the game's characters up until this point, let me tell you something to ease your concerns. One of the most memorable things I can recall from my time working at a game company is that everybody working on a project would contribute in some way to the story, characters, and dialogue. It would start with one person suggesting a rough idea, and then everyone else would give their feedback and suggestions until eventually that rough idea was refined and polished into something great. When I talk about characters who haven't actually appeared in the game yet, like Kizana, for example, you don't need to feel like what I'm saying is set in stone. I'm just pitching a rough idea that will eventually be refined and polished into something better as feedback rolls in, because that's what the game development process is all about. For example, a few videos ago, I suggested the idea that Kizana should copy Kokuna's hairstyle and then demand that Kokuna changes her hairstyle. In the time since then, I've begun to wonder if it would be a better idea if Kokuna is the one who imitates Kizana because Kokuna idolizes Kizana. Instead of characterizing Kizana as someone who lacks creativity, perhaps Kizana should value creativity above all other things, and encourage her club members to be as original as possible. Subsequently, she would be disappointed in Kokuna for being derivative, and would give Yandere-chan the task of helping Kokuna to find her own unique style, which would result in Kokuna adopting a new hairstyle that expresses who she is. This would solve the problem of two girls having the same hairstyle, and would make Kizana a more likable character. I originally described Kizana as an arrogant, egotistical snob, but recently I've been considering the idea of making her a regal, elegant character with a sharp tongue. Sassy, but classy. I still think that she should have flaws and insecurities, but I also want her to have some 
charm, and charisma. There are a lot of ways to make her stand out among the other characters, besides giving her a highly exaggerated personality. For example, maybe Kizana will occasionally use foreign words and phrases in her speech, which is something that no other character in the game would do. In short, what I'm saying is that if you don't like what I have to say about a character in these videos, just keep in mind that the game development process involves sharing rough ideas, listening to feedback, and polishing your material until it shines. Very few things in these videos are permanently set in stone forever. I hope you enjoyed this retrospective on Yan Dere-chan. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.